Hello. Want to do this? Well, you've probably come to the wrong place, in all honesty, but I'll see what I can do. A very, very large disclaimer before we get started, I don't really know what I'm doing. I got a bit of info on this from fellow YouTube person Philman, and just sort of winged it from there, and my worryingly large folder of footage for this video pretty well reflects that. I make tons and tons of mistakes that I go back and fix many hours of footage later, and while I'm going to edit this a little out of order so that it's more logical for you, with this much footage, there's just no way I'm getting a concise, easy-to-follow edit out of it. This is also really tricky stuff. There are going to be things specific to your vehicle or suspension setup that you'll have to figure out yourself, and this is an extremely difficult beam mod. Be warned that it will be very time-consuming. It took up all of my free time for about eight days, though a lot of that was because I didn't know what I was doing. This is just about the most difficult mod to an autocar you can do and still call it an autocar, and while I did manage to do it with relatively little experience, keep in mind that I also had a particularly strong motivation. Anything for content. That said, if you dare, let's open auto. So this tutorial assumes that you've already made your automation vehicle. This one was made for my last auto vehicle, linked in the description. But if you haven't, uh, you might want to do that now. It goes without saying, but if you want to make animated suspension, you also need to make suspension to animate. Done with that? Great. Hello. This is me from over a month in the future butting in for a second to tell you that past me is an idiot. He won't tell you anything wrong exactly, but what he has forgotten to tell you is what this video covers so you can actually prepare your suspension accordingly. So here's a list of that. Custom rims and tires. Wheel hubs. Solid axles, suspension arms, which can also be applied to front drive axles, torsion bars, or whatever else moves like an arm. Steering, but only the tie rods. Springs, though the entire spring structure will compress, not just the actual coils. And shocks, made in two halves, as explained in a moment by my past self. I will also make a really vague reference to how to do those weird off-road sway bars you might see somewhere in this footage, and direct you to a different video explaining steering wheel animation. Technically, since I explained the concept behind how all of this works, you can also maybe figure out how to make other suspension parts too if you want. In addition, I'd advise you to make mounting points on the wheel hubs and body for your suspension parts, so it's easier to figure out where to put everything together in beam. Got it? Great. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled past me. Technically this next step is not necessary, but it will save you hours and hours of work, so you should definitely do it. We need to separate all of our suspension parts from the body so they're easier to select in Blender. In my case this is done for the steering wheel too, since I'm animating that. I might include a little segment at the end on how to do that, but if I don't you can watch Filman's video on it, it's how I learned. I'll link that in the description as well. Assuming your vehicle has shock absorbers, you should separate these into two parts. Before you do that, make sure the lower half extends a good distance into the upper half of the shock, otherwise when it extends in beam, they'll visually separate. And now we're actually done in auto. Just export it, making sure to tick the box for unbreakable fixtures so your suspension doesn't literally fall apart on impact, and then open beam. Load your car to make sure everything works as intended, particularly with textures, as these are pretty fiddly with auto beam cars. My car has tons of issues, not least of which is this absolutely insane collision box, which I think is probably caused by the giant cloud of suspension parts around it. This means that you may have this problem too, and I'll double back and explain note editing at the end of the video for those who don't already know how to do it. The important thing here is you can't fix that in auto, at least not without undoing the important step we just did, and so this is fine for now. Once you're happy with your car, you can unpack the mod by finding it in the mod menu and, well, unpacking it. You can then click open in Explorer to find your beam mods folder if you don't already know where that is. Now we get to the fun part, and by fun I mean incredibly tedious. Open Blender- wait, hang on, do you have Blender? If not, you need to install that, it's free on Steam. Anyway, open Blender, delete that cube it spawns by pressing A and then delete, and then import the main vehicle mesh from the mod folder you found earlier by pressing F4 and navigating through that menu.
It's worth looking into the basics of Blender, moving the camera, stuff like that, before doing this, but I'll do my best for the lazier among you. Click the body of your car, use Ctrl I to invert the selection, and delete. This leaves the body, as if I have one, and the fixtures, but removes everything else, which is what we want. Hit Tab and Alt Z to do whatever this is, then drag select all of the suspension, you'll have to do this in chunks, and delete that too. This is because the first step in Blender is to create a new file for the body without all those static suspension parts, and while we're at it... You see how my car looks suspiciously like a Volkswagen Beetle in this view? I made the original auto bodywork invisible, but there's still a bunch of loose geometry there to add a bit of size to the file, so let's delete that. Click Select, Select All by Trait, Boost Geometry, and then Delete again. Looks much better. Rename the body over here, for simplicity I'm just changing a single number, and then export it as a .dae file into the same folder with a different name from the original mesh. Obviously we also need all of the suspension parts isolated as well. Hit F4, New, General, Don't Save, and then load the main mesh again. Delete everything but the body and fixtures again, then this time remove all of it but a moving piece of your choosing. I'll start with the lower left suspension arm. Now we need to center it at the origin. Press 3 on the numpad, A to select the part quickly, and press G or click the moving thing on the left and move it to the origin. Press numpad 1 and do the same thing. I'm not sure if you actually have to align it on an edge, but I do, and it'll probably make things easier. You will want to rotate it though, and you can do that by pressing R and dragging the mouse, be sure to click afterwards so it doesn't continue doing it. This just makes it easier to work with later. Once you're happy with it, name it something, ideally specific enough to know what it is later, export it as another .dae file, and then… yeah, you're not gonna like this. Now we have to do that over and over again. Wonderful. Yep, we need to do this for every individual moving piece of the suspension. I ended up doing this for each side individually, making a mirrored version for whatever side I worked on second. That's M and then X if you're wondering. But I don't think you actually have to do this, you can just invert the scale of the mesh in JBeam later to save file size and time. I finish up with the axle, my 34th piece. <laughs> yes, really. And now it's time to do some JBeam editing. Open this main file. I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio, which is free, but you can also use Notepad++, also free, or whatever text editor you want. Our first JBeam mod is also the easiest. Under Flexbodies, change the name of the mesh for your car body to the new one we made probably several hours ago if you have as many parts as me. Important thing to note, the name comes from when you renamed the body in Blender, not the name of the file you exported it as, and this goes for all of the many Flexbodies you'll add later. To check that you did this right, just tab back into Beam and hit Ctrl R to... Uh, well, I'm not sure, but it reloads the whole file or something. There we go, that cloud of suspension is gone. But, well, we also need all that stuff, so it's time for the real tedious part, which I'm genuinely dreading trying to explain. For you, that's maybe 20 seconds further along in the video. For me, at the time of recording this line, it's a source of dread and procrastination I've been worried about editing for weeks. There is so much footage, and the important parts are indistinguishable from the useless parts, so this will be a pain. But hey, let's see what future me managed to come up with. Okay, future me here, and I have indeed figured out how to edit all of this stuff. It's pretty simple. Um, I won't. I've decided that editing the actual footage from when I did the JBeam mods is a lose-lose for us. I'd have to spend weeks editing this, which would also delay the video for you, and the edit would be extremely confusing and hard for you to follow. Unless your suspension is literally an exact one-to-one -one replica of mine, and maybe even then, you're going to have to figure out the specifics of this yourself anyway. Instead, I'm just going to record some new JBeam with a new lazy car and give you the best framework I can for the basics, followed by maybe a few specific examples and tricks from when I did the suspension for real. So to start with, I'll need to explain a few basic parts of our main JBeam file, nodes and node groups, beams, flex bodies, slide nodes, and rails. 
If you already know a decent amount about JBeam, I'd skip this section if I were you. It's unnecessarily long and in detail so that I can refer to all of this stuff shorthand later in the video. As usual, there will be plenty of timestamps for you. Let's start with nodes and node groups. There are more complicated things you can do with nodes, but for the most part you can just copy one of the body nodes, all named A and then a number, and then paste it below all of said body nodes. This is the name of the node, and duplicate names are bad, so always rename it something that isn't already used in the JBeam. This, meanwhile, is the position of the node with an x, y, and z value. x is side to side, positive values go on the left side, negative go on the right. y is the forward position, and somewhat counterintuitively, a more positive value moves the node backward while negative moves it forward. z is the height, and this one is obvious, positive up, negative down. As for all the weird formatting stuff, you know, the brackets, quotation marks, commas, whatnot, uh, just use sort of the same format as you see in this video. This is easy to mess up, causing issues, and a pain to spot since there's so much code, but it's a simple fix, so you should be fine. If you get stuck, I'd also recommend Beam's own website, which has a bunch of helpful resources for JBeam modding. Anyway, unless you want your suspension to move with the body, which you don't by the way, the nodes for each suspension part need to be in their own node group. Add this little thing above your node. I'm planning on putting all the larger sections of code in a pinned comment, by the way, so that you don't have to type it all out from what you see on screen. Hopefully I remember to do that. This is the name of the group, and unless you want to confuse yourself, you should name it after the suspension part that it corresponds to. Self-collision is whether the nodes in the group can collide with the body and other parts of the car. Uh, leave this false to prevent issues. The node weight is not super important for now. The only time it might matter is if part of your suspension is being kind of unstable, which mine frequently was. Usually it's some other problem, which tends to be a mistake somewhere, but you can try increasing the node weight, which makes it more stable. Next is beams. As you can imagine, given that we're playing a game called BeamNG, not to mention the file is called a JBeam file, beams are pretty important. Basically, they connect nodes together so they don't just fall off as soon as the car spawns. This is insanely simple, and there aren't even groups to worry about. There are types of beams, but they don't really matter for the purposes of this video. For us, it's easy. Bracket, node name, comma, space, node name, bracket, comma. That's it. Most of that is formatting, obviously. All you need to know is, as long as it's under the beam section and formatted properly, the two nodes you've put here will be connected together with a beam. In general, the more nodes you connect your new nodes to, the more stable they will be, but don't do this at random. If you connected, for instance, your wheel hub to the body, your suspension would lock up. Don't do that. More later. Flex bodies are next, and they're super easy. You can start making one by just copy pasting any flex body in the file, though the only one to start out with is the body. This is the name of the mesh in Blender, and you should change this to match whatever part you're adding. This is the node group the flex body is assigned to, and therefore moves with. Obviously, this needs to match up exactly with the name of the node group you've made for it. This is the offset from the center of the car, which you'll need to fine-tune for each part. It works the same as the node positions I explained earlier. There's also rotation, which is too confusing for me to explain the directions of. I'm not a smart person. Just play around with it, it's not too hard. Scale you should probably never have to use, except when you're mirroring flex bodies to the other side. Slide nodes and rails are the most complex thing we'll use, and apparently there isn't even a section for them in the default JBeam now, though I think there was when I made the buggy. It might be because I hid the suspension on this example car, but I could have sworn I did that for the buggy too. Uh, maybe it's just some update thing. Anyway, the example on Beam's website explains it better than I ever could in words. Rails are what slide nodes slide on. This is the name of the rail. The links are simply telling the game what nodes should be used as the ends of the rail. Do note that you have to have actually already made these nodes first. Neither rails nor slide nodes actually create anything new, they just change how these nodes behave. 
broken, looped, and caps can all be ignored. An important thing to keep in mind with rails, by the way, is that unlike beams, they don't care if the distance between their endpoints changes. This is absolutely vital for how I ended up making the shock absorbers work. Slide nodes are where the confusing stuff happens. The ID is not a new node, it simply tells the game that you want the node to be... slid. This is the name of the rail that you want the node to slide along. This is whether the slide node is attached to the rail or not, and frankly I have no idea what this is for. If it was set to false, wouldn't it just not work? Whatever, leave it as true. This is the hard part. Basically, if this is set to true, then the game will force the node to be fixed to the rail. However, if it isn't already there, the car has a habit of exploding, so sorry to tell you, you will have to use math to manually place the node somewhere along that rail's path anyway. I'll explain that later too. This is the tolerance. You can maybe set this to a really tiny, non-zero number as a last resort if your car continues to explode, but it's best at zero, otherwise the slide node will move around a little bit. The rest of the stuff, again, you can ignore. Okay, that's the basics down, let's make some suspension. This is the car I'll be working with, already used for the node position demo earlier. It is of course not a complete car, but that's the point. This way you can see everything I do as easily as I can manage. To start with, here's something I didn't use for my buggy, but which is definitely possible. If your car has brakes, you probably want them to rotate with the wheels, right? So just make a flex body for one of the brake discs and attach it to the node groups for the corresponding wheel rim, which you can find in the wheel J-beam. Move it to the center of the wheel, and there you go. To mirror the flex body, create a duplicate, replace the node groups with the ones for the other side, and make the X position negative. My brakes are not rotated, and yours probably shouldn't be either, but so that I don't have to explain again later, don't invert the X rotation, but do invert Y and Z. Finally, though this again doesn't matter with my brake discs, invert the X scale and it should be mirrored when you reload the car. Obviously, for parts where you've had to do your own nodes, beams, etc., be sure to make duplicates of those for the other side as well, inverting X scale and renaming as you go. This can also be used if you want to have custom rims, be sure to remove the original flex body for the rims in that case. You can even use the tire node groups if you want your custom tires to deform. This doesn't really show up here because the brake is not near the tire nodes. I've moved it up to demonstrate, but your tire will just be big enough to begin with. Anyway, let's leave the brake discs as they were and move on to the next logical step. Wheel hubs. To start with, let's open the front suspension J-beam file, which is where the wheel hub nodes will be located. Now, I assume because I have no visible suspension, there's no flex body for the wheel hubs, and to complicate matters further, there's also no node group. Yes, there's this hub front thing, but that's for both hubs at once, which is not what we want. Luckily, there's a bit of trickery we can do here. As you can see here, we have multiple node groups for one node, so let's just add more node groups. I'll put hub fr above this right side node, creating a new node group we can use for our flex body. Now, because of how J-Beam works, this would put all of the nodes in this section in our new front right hub group, which we don't want. To fix this, we'll just copy and paste this line, a lot. And then we'll change the R to an L above all the left side hub nodes. This way we keep all of the original node groups for each node, but we sort them into our new left and right wheel hub groups as well. Now all we need to do is make new flex bodies that use those groups, position them accordingly, and there you go. In retrospect, using a cylinder for the hubs was not a great choice, but as you can see if you look really closely, they aren't rotating with the wheels, so all is working as intended. That was easy. Not as easy as axle suspension, though, if you have an axle. We can pretty much do what we did for the wheel here, just with a different node group, in my case taken from the rear suspension file. 
Unfortunately, it's going to get a lot harder from here. The trouble with suspension arms is that there are several different ways you could do them. Ideally, you would add nodes for the arms, but not actually attach them with beams, so that it doesn't interfere with the movement of the suspension. This can easily be done for, say, the smaller suspension arms attached to the rear axle on my buggy, which have nothing attached to them. The trouble is, for most suspension setups, you probably need to attach shocks and springs to your main suspension arms, and that means you'll need beams to hold everything together. The best possible solution for this is to simply use the existing, currently invisible suspension arm to make the flex body for yours, and then attach your spring or shock to it to avoid messing with the suspension geometry by adding a new arm. The issue is, unless the existing arm lines up very closely with where your arm attaches, it might not align right, and the mesh will subtly stretch and move around. So I'm actually going to show you three ways of making a suspension arm, starting with a basic one with nothing attached. This is best used for smaller arms, drive axles, and similar things. Make a new node group for the arm, and create three nodes under it. This first node will be attached to the wheel hub nodes on whichever side you're working on with a few beams. You'll want to very carefully tweak the placement of this node until it moves as little as possible when you steer, otherwise your suspension arm will rotate side to side, which is not good. You can do this by pressing Ctrl N to display the nodes, and maybe Ctrl B for the beams too if it helps you find the node you're looking for. Once the first node is positioned more or less at a stable point and at the height you want the arm to attach, we can move on to the other two nodes, which are easier. Basically just move them wherever your arm mounts to the body, spaced apart from each other horizontally, and then, this is the important bit because they need to stay put, attach them to several body nodes with more beams. You'll want to make sure you attach to nodes in different places, by the way, or the connections will be unstable. I usually go with four nodes at four different corners from the suspension arm. Then, because it makes things marginally quicker for me when we do this again on the other side, I also find the name of the equivalent body nodes on the other side and attach it to those too. This results in eight connections, and that's generally stable enough. Next, make a flex body using your arm mesh and the node group we just made. Reload the car and... unless you're lucky, it probably has not spawned. You see, one of JBeam's unique and extremely annoying little difficulties is the VY node error. The nodes in the node group need to be relatively three-dimensionally placed, or the game decides there's no good reference for the position of the mesh and refuses to spawn it. This is a significant issue. The VY node has to be part of the node group, and as such, its position will change how the flex body moves. Attach it to the body, and the suspension arm will warp when it rotates. The same might be true if you attach it to the hub, depending on where you place it. You could attach it to neither, and instead attach it to the other arm nodes in the group, but then you've made the arm structural, and it will affect the actual suspension behavior. There might be a better solution I'm not aware of, but I think the best we can do is to simply clone all three suspension arm nodes and the beams corresponding to them, and just move these nodes up a little. It'll still skew a little, but it should at least be balanced, and it will get the flex body to spawn. Okay, so that's the first way of doing things. It's simple, and it doesn't interfere with the suspension movement, but it can also be a bit janky, especially if your vehicle has lots of suspension travel, and it doesn't allow you to connect shocks or springs to your arm. So let's move on to the second method. This one should result in more natural looking movement, is also fairly simple, and will allow you to attach your shocks and springs. However, it also messes with the actual physics of the suspension, which is not great. More on that at the end of this section. This is essentially the same thing as the last method, except instead of making a duplicate of all the nodes to solve the VY issue, we'll make a fourth node in the same node group. Position this more or less in the middle of all your nodes, it doesn't have to be exact, and then move it up a little bit. Then connect this new node to all three of the existing ones. To make sure this node doesn't move around because of how arm linkage works, also connect your existing ones together. 
Okay, everything looks like it worked, and chances are you don't even notice much of a change to the behavior of the suspension. The issue, though, is that structural changes like this add up slowly. This one might not seem to do much, but add a few more things like this and your suspension will stiffen up a lot. Not to mention it'll get extremely bouncy in a way that you can't really tune out. My off-road buggy uses mostly this method, and it's a great example of the problems that go along with it. I did my best to change the tuning to account for this, but watch how it bounces, especially before tuning. Yeah, not ideal, at least for an off-roader. So, option 3. Option 3 is the best one by far, in theory. You only need to make one new node, you don't need to change the beam structure of the suspension at all, the flex body will move in a natural way, and it'll work with shocks or springs. Only one problem. It's the hardest method by far, and it's also the riskiest. The idea behind this is, instead of making a new fake suspension arm for the flex body, we'll simply use the real thing. We're going to make the existing arm line up with the flex body instead of the other way around. To visualize this as we go, let's turn off beams entirely, cycle through with control B, remember, and instead turn on triangles with control T so that we can see the arms. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to remove all of the triangles from the body to make it easier to see. Triangles are important for collisions and aerodynamics, so you probably shouldn't do this on your own vehicle. For this next bit, you'll be working in a different J-beam section, depending on which arm you're working on, but the same steps apply. Open the appropriate suspension J-beam file, in my case the front. Now, depending on which arm you're working on, you will need to look in different sections. For this example, I'm using the lower arm, so I'll be looking here and here, but if you're using the upper arm, those sections are right below the ones I'm using. Anyway, we want to do that same trick we did with the hubs and add node groups for the nodes in the hub mounting points and body mounting points sections, making sure to separate them according to their side again. Then add a VY node and beams, same as in the previous method. Make the flex body, mine is already here from filming the last bit, and move it to wherever you want it to be. Because the flex body and the underlying structure don't quite match, the movement isn't perfect. Let's fix that. Move those hub and body mounting nodes to match the flex body you've spawned. So that's moved the suspension arm, but now we have an alignment issue. Basically, because the arms are two different lengths, wheel camber changes when the suspension compresses. This is not exactly an issue, the suspension was already like this to some degree, but I've made it worse by lengthening the lower arm. So I'll tune the alignment, basically just moving the upper arm nodes around. Your upper arm should ideally be a little bit shorter than the lower one. The result of this is a little bit of negative camber when there's load on the suspension, since the shorter arm sort of pulls the wheel inwards. This is ideal for cornering grip, as long as it's not too much. It didn't happen while filming this, but when I changed the front suspension geometry on the buggy, the wheels started towing out, that is, pointing in two different directions, quite a bit. This is because I was maxing out the amount that the steering could move, which is an incredibly easy fix. Find the nodes for the steering rack and move them further apart, or move the steering rack mounts closer together. You might also notice that your ride height seems lower now if you lengthened the arms a lot like I did. This is because longer arms mean the wheels have more leverage on the suspension, so in effect everything gets softer. Over here in the suspension J-beam file, under the coilover section, you can stiffen things up to compensate. Okay, great. The arms are done, sort of. You'll still have to pick which method you use based on the situation. I'd recommend method 3 for lower wishbone suspension, method 1 for secondary arms like upper wishbone suspension, which doesn't need anything attached to it, and method 2 for the main arms on solid axle suspension since there's no side-specific equivalent in the original J-beam. I think we'll do the steering next, because it should set up the idea of slide nodes and rails pretty well for the last couple things. Basically, we need the tie rods to slide along an invisible steering rack so that they stay connected to the wheel hubs without stretching out. In this case, the steering rack is a rail, and the tie rods are normal nodes on the hub side and slide nodes on the steering rack side. 
I will hopefully have remembered to put some basic slide node and rail code in a pinned comment or something for you to use, but I'll take mine from the actual steering rack in the front suspension J-beam. Create two new nodes for the steering rack ends. I like to put these in their own group. We won't be using them for any flex bodies, but this keeps them from interfering with how the car body deforms. Once you've placed them wherever your steering rack should be, attach them to the body with beams and set them as the links for your rail. I should note, by the way, that I've renamed the rail so it doesn't conflict with the actual steering. I'm not sure exactly what would happen if I didn't do that, but it certainly would not be good. Next, make a new group for your tie rod and put two nodes in there too. The first will be the hub node. Move it wherever your tie rod attaches to the hub, then connect it to all of the wheel hub nodes with more beams. The second is the slide node. Because your steering rack is, presumably, both horizontal and unrotated, you don't need to do much work to figure out where to place this node. Just use the Y and Z position of your rail ends, and set the X position somewhere in between them, around where the tie rod should connect. Set up the slide node by setting the node ID in the rail name, connect the two tie rod nodes together with one more beam, and then save the J-beam and reload your car to see if it explodes. Assuming it hasn't, if it has you'll have to do some troubleshooting that I unfortunately cannot help you with as it's a case-by-case -case thing, you're already almost done. Only one problem. With just two nodes for the tie rod, how are you supposed to get the flex body to spawn? Well, although this is definitely not the right way to do this, we're going with the easy, lazy solution, because any issues it causes will be too subtle to notice. Take the rail and the rail end nodes and beams, duplicate them, and move them up a bit. Take the slide node and the node it uses, duplicate those, move that node up a bit too. Make sure to assign this new slide node to the new rail as well. Take the hub node, beams, and the tie rod beam, duplicate those, and yes, move those too. Now we've made an invisible second steering rack and tie rod, which should provide the VY nodes we need when we make the flex body for the first set. Speaking of which, make a flex body, move it as needed, and you should be done. Or not. Yeah, I'm an idiot, I forgot to rename one of those duplicate nodes. Don't do that. So, after tweaking the position of the tie rods, that's steering done. Well, almost. If your rail isn't long enough, you'll max out the steering early and cause some physics issues, so be sure to check to make sure the slide nodes aren't reaching the end of the rails. If they are, reposition those nodes accordingly. When you mirror all of this over to the other side for the other tie rod flex body, remember that you don't need to duplicate the rails since those are symmetrical and can have multiple slide nodes on them. Well, good news! We're almost at the finish line here. Next up is the spring, which is actually pretty easy. Make a flex body and a node group with four nodes in it. Two of these nodes will be connected to the lower suspension arm, at least assuming you've correctly used method 2 or 3 for it. Place them perpendicular to the rotation of the arm so that the two nodes move evenly and the spring doesn't warp. In other words, if your arm rotates this way, your nodes should be placed on or parallel to this line. On a front suspension arm, this means they are placed identically, except for the Y position. The other two nodes are attached to the body and go wherever the top of the shock mounts along a parallel line to the bottom ones you just placed. If you haven't actually made the mounting point for the shock in automation, you'll just have to guess and then reposition the nodes when the flex body is spawned, which is what we're going to do now by reloading the car. Excellent! Only one thing left to do, and that's shocks. So I did two different things to make the front and rear shocks on my buggy. However, the way I did the front ones was straight up stupid, it involves something called L-beams, and because it is harder and worse, I won't even bother teaching you that. We'll just go with how I did the rear shocks. This is a little difficult to explain, so I'm going to do what I did for the node placement for the springs and draw you a terrible diagram. Don't worry, you don't actually have to make this stuff just yet. Okay, here are two nodes. The lower one will belong to the node group for the lower shock, while the upper one is part of the upper shock. They're the ends of a rail, and here's where the important part of the properties of a rail comes in. 
And yes, I know, I can't draw straight lines. The snip tool I used for this is basically MS Paint, so give me a break. When the suspension compresses, these nodes get closer together, and an ordinary beam would resist that and make the suspension stiffer. Rails, however, don't care. The only thing this rail is doing is making sure the two halves of the shock will stay lined up. Next, two more nodes, located in the exact same place in the middle of the rail, and once again they belong to the two different halves of the shock. These nodes, however, will have beams since they need to be connected to their respective end nodes. The nodes will be pulled away from each other when the suspension extends, and pushed past each other when it compresses. It doesn't matter that they won't line up exactly with the flex bodies for your shock because the movement is still correct. To get the flux body to spawn, then, we'll just have an identical shock. Like the spring, we'll line this up along this line perpendicular to the suspension arm so the flex body doesn't warp. Okay, let's start by making two node groups, one for each half of the shock. Make four nodes under each node group. I would advise naming the nodes according to the node group, since this will get very confusing if you don't. One node in each group will be one of the ends of the overall shock, so place the lower group's node at the bottom and the upper group's node roughly at the top. Again, you may have to fine-tune this later. Attach the lower node to the suspension arm and the upper one to the body, just like with the springs. In fact, I'm just copying and renaming the nodes in those beams because I'm lazy. Make a rail using these nodes as the links. Next, one node in each node group will go in the middle of the rail, and you'll have to do some simple math here to find the exact midpoint. For each coordinate, that is x, y, and z, of the rail ends, add the two positions together and divide by 2 to get the average. Do that for all three to find the center, though I'm only doing it for z because my shock happens to be completely straight up and down for ease of demoing. Connect the midpoint nodes to the shock ends in their respective node groups, and then set them up as slide nodes attached to the shock rail. Then duplicate the rail and slide nodes, renaming IDs and such accordingly. Make the remaining two nodes in each node group clones of the first two, duplicate the beams, and then move them along that perpendicular line. Finally, make not just one but two flex bodies, assigning one to each node group and using the appropriate meshes for the upper and lower shock. Oh yeah, did you want to know what I meant about cars exploding? Here's footage from my first attempt at loading the car after filming that. I fixed it by increasing the node weight of the shocks. Anyway, aside from potential fine-tuning you may have to do, that's shocks done, and that's suspension done. Yep, we're all done. I've taught you how to do everything I did for the buggy, in most cases better than I did it for the buggy, since past me is an idiot. Ignore these weird off-road sway bars, I didn't teach you those, but they're really too niche to explain in detail. You can think of them as two Method 2 suspension arms connected together, with something called a support beam to stop them from inverting. If you want to know how that works, just read through Beam's documentation. I've been working on this video for over a month now, and I don't want to delay it any further by needlessly explaining something almost nobody will use. All that's left now is a few loose threads from earlier in the video to tie up, namely node editing and steering wheel animation. Node editing is super simple now that you're used to moving nodes around anyway. Just make sure to check how the beams are behaving every time you change something, because drastic node editing changes the beam structure a lot. I believe I'd said that I'd maybe teach you how to do the steering wheel at the end, but I won't for the same reason I'm not covering the sway bars. If you want to learn how to do that, I'll give you a link to Filman's video on it, either in the description or a pinned comment. I'll also provide the steering wheel prop code from my buggy so that you don't have to copy it by eye from Filman's video. But uh, that's pretty much it. I'm writing the last several pages of this script in one go, so I don't know for sure yet, but I suspect the video is around 40 minutes long now, and that's long enough. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Just keep in mind that I don't know everything, nor do I have the time to troubleshoot things for you. For now though, thanks for watching and goodbye. <sighs> oh man, my voice hurts.